My name is Captain Ashley Kessler. I'm on the teaching staff at San Jacinto College, the Maritime Technology and Training Center campus here in Houston, Texas. Radar and ARPA. This video is about relative motion and relative motion rules. The objectives for this presentation at the end of this presentation, you will be able to, one, define and explain relative motion. Two, explain and demonstrate the seven relative motion rules. Third, explain upscope and downscope contacts. And fourth, define and demonstrate the across the scope or limbo contact and why it is going faster than our own ship. Relative motion defined. In the American Practical Navigator, Volume 2, Bowditch defines relative motion as relative movement. Relative movement. Motion of one object relative to another. The expression is usually used in connection with problems involving motions of one vessel to another. The direction, such motion being called direction of relative movement, and the speed of relative motion called speed of relative movement or relative speed. This is a radar transfer plotting sheet and a relative motion line. Our own ship is going to be heading due north and the contact is going to be heading northwest. The relative motion line from R00 to M06, the direction of the relative motion line is heading approximately 220 degrees. The true motion or the true course and speed of the contact, the E to M, is heading about 015 degrees. And that's going to show the aspect of the vessel. But this vessel is going to track down this relative motion line. So relative motion would be shown like this as, as you look out your window. This is how the vessel is approaching you on your radar screen or as you look out the window. We cannot see the EDM or the true motion of the contact on a radar. So we'll see the port and satellites all the way down this relative motion line until the contact reaches closest point of approach. Then when you look out off your starboard quarter, you will be able to see both satellites and master masthead lights. Then when it passes closest point of approach, you'll be able to see the starboard light and Saturn satellites. There are seven rules of relative motion. These are published in the United States publication, Radar Navigation and Maneuvering Board Manual, publication 1310 on page 158. There's seven rules, and I'm not going to read every single rule here to you. You may pause the video and read them, but I will read them when I explain each rule to you individually. Relative motion. As part of our situational awareness, it is important as a watch officer to be able to understand, manage, and control relative motion for collision avoidance purposes. Relative motion is what runs us over. These seven relative motion rules are for stabilized radars. This is stated in the Radar Navigation and Maneuvering Board Manual. Preponderantly, it's for the north of stabilized relative motion radars. These rules talk about upscope targets and downscope targets. 
what an upscope target is, is any relative motion moving in the direction of the heading flasher. So if we look at this picture on the right, the stabilized course up relative motion radar, up the scope would be any contact moving in the direction of the heading flasher. Conversely, any motion going in this direction would be down the scope. On the north up stabilized relative motion radar, the picture on the left, this would be considered an upscope target and this would be considered a downscope target. The unstabilized head up relative motion radars, these rules do not apply. It has to be a stabilized radar. Relative to motion rule one. Any contact appearing on the scope, regardless of position and range and bearing, whose direction of relative motion is up the scope from a few degrees up to parallel to the heading flasher, when own ship turns right, the direction of relative motion of the observed threat will turn left. So let's explain this. Relative motion rule one, upscope targets. Contact turn opposite of own ship. So our own ship's going to turn from due north to starboard. I have an upscope target here, and when I make that course change to starboard, it's going to turn in the opposite direction, or in this case, it will be turning to port. Relative motion rule two. Any contact whose direction of relative motion is down the scope, that is anywhere from a few degrees down to parallel to the heading flasher, but in the opposite direction, when own ship turns right, the direction of relative motion will turn to its right. Let's explain. Relative motion rule two, down scope targets. Contact turns same direction as own ship. Our vessel is going to turn from due north to starboard. So if we have a down scope target, when we alter course to starboard, it's going to turn in the same direction. When we do our radar plots, we have to make a new relative motion line. So we're going to follow rule two to make this new relative motion line. Anytime our ship turns to starboard, it's going to make the contact look like it turns to starboard. So this is how you always get this new relative motion line correct. We're heading up the radar scope. When the contact gets the, the execution point or MX, if we turn to starboard, it's going to appear that this contact turns to starboard. So as it tracks down this relative motion line, it gets the MX. We alter course to starboard. The contact turns to starboard and tracks down this new relative motion line. Relative motion rule three. Any contact whose direction of relative motion is across the scope is in limbo. Changing of ship's course left or right will have very little effect on the crossing contact's direction of relative motion until its category is changed to either a down contact or up contact, and then the contact will follow rules one or two as stated previously. A limbo target is also called an across the scope contact. In publication 1310, Radar Navigation Maneuvering Board Manual, in Appendix 3, in the glossary of terms, it explains both those definitions on page 357. If you look up limbo target, it'll say see across the scope target. You look up across the scope target, it will say see limbo target. Relative to motion rule three, 
and across the scope contact is in limbo. Any contact's relative motion is going perpendicular or at a right angle to the heading flasher. The contact must be going faster than own ship. Contact's going at a right angle or 90 degrees to our heading flasher. They have to be going faster than our own ship. Let's find out why. So why are limbo targets or across the scope targets faster than own ship? If we construct a basic radar triangle, it will make sense. There's my relative motion from R00 to M06. It's going perpendicular or right angle to the heading flasher. I put in my own ship's true course and speed vector. Then when I complete the triangle from E to M, EDM is longer than our true course and speed. So E to M is the contact true course and speed or their true motion. So they are going faster than own ship. In geometry, this is a right triangle. It's hypotenuse of a right triangle. Relative motion rule four. Relative motion rule four states, if own ship reduces speed or stops, all relative motion observed on your scope will swing forward or up the scope, no matter where they are. Own ship reduces speed. If own ship reduces speed or stops, all relative motion will move up the scope. So this time we're going to slow down. And we start to slow down, the contact's going to slow down and it'll start moving up the scope. We slow down the vessels start moving up the scope. Contact Charlie. When we slow down, the vessel starts to move up the scope. Relative motion rule five. Conversely, if own ship increases speed, all relative motion will swing aft or down the scope. The experienced mariner, of course, knows that any contact whose relative motion is up the scope is a faster ship. This fact also applies to contacts whose direction or relative motion is at right angles to the heading flasher, as in Rule 3 contacts. Though specific speed is not available in using direction or relative motion technique, the speed information is adequate for making decisions in maneuvering. The experience officer usually handles speed on the basis of a ratio. Is the threat's relative speed or slower than own ship speed? Our own ship increases speed. If own ship increases speed, our relative motion will move down scope. Contact A is traveling relative motion is coming down the scope when we increase our speed it's going to appear that it increases its speed and heads down the scope relative motion of contact B when we increase our speed it's going to appear that it's going to fall down the scope Contact C, the relative motion is coming up the scope. When we increase our speed, it will start to maneuver down the scope. Relative motion rules six and seven. Rule number six, if contact's relative speed is high, the effect of own ship's avoiding action is low. Rule number seven, 
If contact's relative speed is low, the effect of own ships avoiding action is high. The state rules six and seven another way. If the contact is faster than own ship, it is likely to be harder to maneuver against it. If it is slower, the known ship essentially is in command of the situation. Relative speeds. Contact A is the faster than the own ship. It is likely to be harder to maneuver against. So we look at the relative motion of contact A from R and M the relative motion vector is longer than our true course and our true speed, our e to r. It'll be difficult to, to maneuver against this vessel. On contact B, if it's slower than own ship, essentially we're in the command of our situation. The r to m vector is shorter than our true course and speed, so we'll be in command of the situation and we have a lot more options for maneuvering against this vessel. Let's review our relative motion rules objectives. In this video, we one, defined relative motion. Two, we explained and demonstrate the seven relative motion rules. Third, explain upscope and downscope targets. And fourth, define and demonstrate the limbo or across the scope contact and why it's going faster than own ship. If you have any questions or comments on this video, you can email me at my campus email at ashley.kessler.sjcd.edu.